that there's a baby. So all of a sudden there's this brand new little life that you knew nothing about 24 hours ago and you're going to the hospital to meet them. Hey friends and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, hello, welcome. My name is Kate. We talk all about mom life. We do day in the lives, routine videos, cleaning and organization. We talk a lot about foster care and adoption as I am a foster to adopt mama and we talk about intentional living, living your best life, living with purpose. So if any of that interests you, I would love to have you subscribe and join the community here on YouTube. Today's video is going to be what to expect when you're picking up a foster baby from the hospital. The first one, I'm just going to say it, there's going to be some sort of confusion. I have picked up three babies from the hospital. Well, two from the hospital, one I was going to pick up from the hospital, but there was mass confusion there. I wasn't actually supposed to be the foster parent. There was a different foster parent that was coming for her. Anyways, just expect there's going to be some sort of confusion. So the agency is the middleman in this situation. They have been called from somebody at the hospital, doctor, nurse, whoever it may be, because the baby has been exposed, there's drugs or alcohol in their system, mother has potentially abandoned the child, whatever the risk factors they are seeing, this is why CAS will be in call, their DCFS. So the agency is the middleman in the situation. Often the nurses know most, not all, about the situation and the parents and what's going on with the baby, where the agency might not know all of these details. And then the nurses don't know you. You, they don't know if you're the foster parent, you don't, they don't know if you're a friend of the bio family trying to sneak in, like you'll have to present your ID, that sort of thing, but I just find it kind of mass confusion when you first get there. You don't really know what questions to ask or who to ask or if you're asking the right questions. You don't know how long you should stay and be visiting the baby. If, honestly, sometimes I felt like I'm in the way when nurses are trying to do certain checks and stuff. And we'll talk about that in a second when they're checking for different things within babies that are in foster care. Usually they'll tell you if there's some sort of in utero exposure but they don't necessarily maybe know what drugs or if it was drugs and alcohol or you know if it was se several drugs. I mean many drug users are poly drug users or the mother admitted to this drug but then when they get the test back there was actually three or four drugs in their system. So there's just kind of a lot of confusion. What's going on with the visit schedules? Are there going to be visits? Are the parents allowed to see this baby? Sometimes there's criminal charges that are laid. There's just a lot of confusion. So just expect that when you're going in, just kind of roll with the punches. I kind of just stay quiet and let the nurses tell me what to do or CES what to do. Very often, so let me, so the first little one, there was no representative from CES, but I had to talk to a social worker from the hospital but they actually had my name and another foster parent's name, so I was there. They let me hold the baby and snuggle the baby, and then I got a call from CAS when I got home saying that, oh, you're actually not taking that baby. So that one was the most confusing. It was my first placement as well, so there was that element of confusion. Next little one was our first official placement. We picked him up from the hospital, and I just remember walking in with this empty car seat, like thinking, are the bio parents gonna be around? I didn't know anything about bio parents and those sort of relationships yet, so it was a little bit of a, just very like, I was kind of apprehensive and nervous and they brought me into the nurse's station. The nurses were kind of telling me a bit about the bio parents and then the representative, the social worker the from CES was there and she told me like a little bit and she's like, okay, you wanna go meet him? So I went in and I saw him and she's like, I'm just gonna go finish some paperwork and then you're good, right? And I was like, yeah, thinking she'd come back in and talk to me. So I'm just sitting there feeding him, changing him and like nobody came back in. So finally a nurse came back in. I was like, oh, did, so-and-so leave and she's like yeah she left she said you were good I was like oh okay I was like I guess I am good so then I asked the nurse a little bit more and she had you know seen the bio parents so she was able to give me a bit more information so nurses are invaluable ask them lots of questions with being respectful of course they have confidentiality agreements as well they're not allowed to tell you everything but they if it pertains to care for the baby they can talk to you a little bit so don't be scared to ask them questions, but of course be respectful to them. The next element you'll most likely be dealing with is withdrawal. So very often babies, when you're getting a newborn baby or babies in the NICU, there was some sort of in utero exposure to drugs or alcohol, and that is why they are being placed in foster care. This is not all situations, not all babies come into care this way, but I would say like 90%. Um, I mean, I don't know if that's being too like yeah, 90% I would say, of the cases that I know of, I've heard of, I've seen, I've experienced, have been because of in utero exposure. So whether bios admit to that, whether the doctors can see some behavior that they may be high on something and then they test their blood, like however it may be, they find out. And the hospitals are mandated to report this. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes kids slip through the cracks. If you saw my video I did about 
um, NES and foster care. For the most part, it is reported and the baby comes into foster care. So now you're dealing with withdrawal. So if you've never dealt with with withdrawal before, it's a very hard thing to witness. Let's talk about that. So when you're dealing with kids with withdrawal, they have something called NAS, so neonatal abstinence syndrome. So basically this just means their body is withdrawing from the drugs that they provided from the mother's drug use through the womb. If they are no longer in the womb with a drug using mother, they go through withdrawals. So there's something called the Finnegan scale, and I believe it's a scale of 1 to 25. I'm going to insert a little picture here with some of the questions that you're going to see. Basically, is there, you know, is there tremoring, tremoring, is there fever, is there color? Like, there's all sorts of things that they'll test. They scored either a 1, 2, or 3, depending on the severity of things. That will give them a rating. So based on their rating on this Finnegan scale, that means they're going to have to be put on meds like morphine or something to wean them off. Um, if it's low enough, they don't have to be put on meds, but they do have to be observed. If it's super, super low, like usually there's a minimum of at least three days of, of observing, no matter what, if there is drug exposure. But the Finnegan scale just kind of gives you the level of severity. Some of these babies, it's horrible. It's awful. Like they're, they're constantly tremoring and shaking. They have really high fevers. They, they feel so sick and it's, it's really heartbreaking to see. You want to, like if you just Google search that, I ha did put some clips of it in that video that I was just talking about, I'll link it up here. But if you just Google NAS, you'll see how some of the babies have to withdraw and it's awful. It can take one week to many, many weeks, even up to six months for babies to completely wean off of medication that is being treated for withdrawal or just to get the drugs out of their system, you know, if they're not being weaned with other drugs. It can take a really, really long time. And the severity of the symptoms are gonna vary depending on the type of drug used, how often the drug was used, how, like the quantity of the drug used, when in the pregnancy the drug was used. It's really hard to say if a baby was exposed to cocaine, this is what you're gonna see. If a baby is born exposed to crystal meth, this is what you're gonna see. If a baby is born exposed to heroin, this is what you're gonna see. So the one thing I can say, opiate-based drugs is a lot harder for babies to withdraw. So heroin, um, any sort of the fentanyls, those are a lot harder for babies to withdraw from and you'll see a lot of tremoring and usually the Finnegan scale is only measuring opiate withdrawals, not so much, um, what's the word, stimulant based drugs like cocaine or crystal meth. So they do vary differently how they will withdraw and if it's opiate based or heroin based, the babies withdraw much, much harder. So you can expect that. Don't be scared to ask the nurses. The nurses have seen this many, many times over and over, sadly. They've seen it. The, the baby that you're taking into your care, I can guarantee, unless it's the nurse's first day or first week, it's not the first one that they've seen. So they'll be able to tell you the severity, how much pain they're in, that sort of thing. And they'll be able to give you some tips and tricks. But basically, anything they tell you to do for a colic baby, you're gonna do that tenfold. So like dark room, minimizing light, minimizing sound, create peace and solitude as much as possible. The babies usually want to be cuddled and held all the time and held really close. Um, so you can expect that. So, so basically if you're visiting in the hospital and the baby's not being released to you yet, the nurses are going to show you how to feed them. Babies that have NAS often have poor sucking, poor latching to the bottles. They're going to show you different ways to hold them if you are a new parent. And you know, for myself, they know this is not my first baby that I've taken care of. So they usually kind of just let me be you know, and just stay as long as you feel comfortable. I mean, I went twice a day. I had other kids to take care of at home. If it was just my first baby, I would probably be there all day holding that baby. But the nurses do hold them and love on them as well. Um, so I just spend as much time as I can there. I'm visiting before I bring the baby home. I've never had a long NICU stay. It was just with Rosie. We just had a few days in the NICU before she came home. The other one I brought right home from the hospital that day, right when I picked him up. I was there for half an hour and he was back, you know, within the hour he was back at my house. Be mindful, don't be in the way of the nurses if they're trying to do certain tests. When they're doing this Finnegan score, they have to test certain things, um, especially if it's the first day or second day. They have to test certain things every so often, like every certain amount of hours. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but just don't be in their way. Just be respectful of the nurses until they're released to you. They are their primary caregiver in that point. So just hold the baby, cuddle the baby, change the baby. You probably won't be bathing the baby in the NICU because they're dealing with other things. Um, feed the baby, all that sort of stuff. So don't be scared to stay too long. The baby does need you there, but the nurses usually kind of work on cycles and if they have to do their next feeding or they have to bath them or whatever they have to do, just give them the space to do that as well.
So the next thing you're going to be dealing with is, is there going to be some sort of NICU stay? The placement worker would hopefully give you some sort of indication as to, are you bringing that baby home in the next couple days? A lot of the times though, it's just a watch and see kind of thing. They have to make sure that the baby is comfortable enough to be sent home. Either completely weaned off the drugs or low dose of the drugs, and then the the doctor or the nurse would have to show you how to administer that. Sometimes they can say, you know, three days up to a week and then sometimes after the week mark the baby's still really withdrawing and you're there for another week. So just try and be flexible with this. Those little souls are going through a lot and you just kind of got to watch and see when it's safe for you to bring them home. Next thing you have to consider is visitation. So very often when babies are apprehended at birth, the parents will have the first day with them but the CAS worker has to be there supervised and then the nurses take them to the NICU away from the parents. And usually the parents are released after 24 hours here in my area anyways. You know, visitation all happens after the fact. So with Rosie, we brought her home on a Sunday and then I believe she had her first visit the next day on a Monday and she had visits Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now one thing I wanna mention is very often there'll be a lot of visits when there's a newborn and that's very important for mom to bond with the baby. No matter what, they may have been exposed to, you know, no matter how you feel about that as a foster parent, it is still very, very important that they have those early bonding moments with their biological mother because you don't know if they are going to be reunified at, at what point. Of course, they need to bond to you as well. They need to bond to a caregiver, but it's very important that they bond to their biological mother early on, not only for the mom, um, because the hope can be taken from them very quickly when their child is apprehended and you know, they need you as the foster parent to show that you're in their corner and that you want to see them get help and get better so that they can get their child back. So it's very often that a newborn will get a lot of visits. So for Rosie, she had three visits a week right off the bat. Most time when I get older kids, they get one visit and then they build up to two and build up to three. But with newborns, I found right away they want three visits right off the bat. And that's for bonding. I don't know if there's any sort of like government standard or reason that they have to do that, but just it's what's best for the babies. I mean, if there's been some sort of abandonment or the bio mother is too hard into the drug situation that she can't even get it together to come see her baby, um, often like the visits will go down to nothing quite soon, but just be prepared that there'll be a lot of visits usually if you're getting a newborn. Now, visitation in the hospital, if the child is going to be in the NICU for a while, again, you're not going to be there when the mom is having or the bio parents are having their visitation. A worker is going to come to the hospital, to the NICU, have the visitation with the baby and the bios in the NICU there and then you'll be either asked to leave or you know they'll arrange a time with you. It's not very often that you're there at the same time because it's a very fragile period when the baby is still withdrawing um, or the baby is sick. The baby might have just been born early, failure to thrive, whatever it may be, um, but is in the NICU. So they often don't like to have both foster parents and biological parents there at the same time. Sometimes they might, they might want you to meet. Every case is a little bit different, so it's hard to say exactly what to expect there. Next thing you have to be prepared for is that there's probably gonna be no supplies. Very often the bio families have nothing for the child. They're not necessarily prepared. This maybe wasn't a um, expected pregnancy or they found out very far along in their pregnancy that they were pregnant. So very often there's going to be zero supplies. So bring diapers, bring clothes, bring all of that. When we picked up Rosie, there was absolutely nothing. And our hospitals, I know in the States, you guys, your hospitals will give you diapers and give you certain things, but it's not like that in Canada. You have to bring everything. So the nurses will like um, sometimes help you with formula because we have those little individual nurses with the little nipples that come separately in the little peel pack. So sometimes the nurse will give you a case of those. I have found, we got that with Rosie, but other than that, I, there was absolutely nothing. So she just had a diaper on and was wrapped in a swaddling blanket. She had zero clothes. Her mom hadn't brought her any clothes. So she had nothing. So if we didn't bring a coming home outfit, there was no outfit to bring her home in. Also bring a car seat. I don't know how it works for us. We are assigned car seats. So we just bring car seats, otherwise the worker can sometimes meet you at the hospital with a car seat, that sort of thing. But just, the nurses don't allow you to leave with the baby until they see that there's a working car seat. So keep that in mind. Next thing I want to mention is it's going to feel very strange. It is, it's different. I feel like when a placement worker is bringing a child to your house, you're opening your door, they're coming to you. 
It's a very different feeling when you're going to a hospital and you maybe just got the call the morning or that night or the night before that there's a baby. So all of a sudden there's this brand new little life that you knew nothing about 24 hours ago and you're going to the hospital to meet them and to fall in love with them and, you know, to navigate all the bio family stuff. It's just a very, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, it's just a strange feeling. I remember with our first little guy, walking in with an empty car seat and then walking out with him in the car seat. And again, it was our first, so there were strange feelings because of that, but it was just a really surreal experience. With Rosie, we were visiting her from, I think she was 34 hours old when we met her, 34 or 36 hours old when we met her. And we were visiting her twice a day up until the day we got to bring her home. So we visited her for three days before we got to bring her home. It's just a really weird feeling going up that elevator with an empty seat and I don't know, just knowing it's just, it's a strange feeling. So be prepared for that. And then there's two sides of the coin, excitement, and it is okay to feel excitement. And I know a lot of people that foster or foster to adopt newborns are hoping to adopt in the end. And that doesn't mean that people don't su support reunification, but fact is fact and not all kids are going to be reunified and some kids will need a forever family. That's just the way it works. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm not supporting reunification or others aren't supporting reunification, but that excitement, you know, if I were the bio family, I would want the foster family to be excited for that baby. When your best friend or your cousin or your sister gets pregnant, there's a baby shower and there's lots of excitement and there's, you know, belly update pictures and there's a lot of excitement and anticipation for these little sweet souls coming into this world. But very often when there is a baby coming into foster care right from birth, those same excitement and anticipation were not there. And, you know, I've already mentioned this often, they're dealing with drug exposure in utero and, you know, maybe the bio family didn't necessarily want them, but they found out too far along in the pregnancy to terminate. Maybe they don't agree with termination and they chose to give life to that baby, even though they were doing things, you know, not good for the growth and development of that baby. Whatever it may be, a lot of times that excitement and anticipation is just not there for these children, you know, beforehand. And it's a lot of gloom and doom because the mother knows that their child is being apprehended and, you know, she's not getting a rush of visitors to the hospital to come and welcome this, oh, it's making me emotional, to welcome this little life into the world. So. It is okay and I want to encourage you to feel excitement because that baby that you're going to pick up from the hospital deserves every ounce of excitement that you can have um, about their little life. And you know, we were so excited about Rosie and it was our first time getting called with a baby right from the hospital and that's not what we, the age group that we intended. Yes, birth, we said birth to four, but that's, you know, for me it wasn't like, oh, I have to, or I really want to have that newborn experience. I had that with my biological daughters. so. But still, when they called me about her, it was just, it was special because you get to know them right from the beginning. And, you know, here we are a year later, over a year later, and we're coming up to adoption with her. And in those days, I didn't know that, but there was so much excitement and, and she deserved all that excitement. She deserved the excitement that our family had for her and the welcoming home and all of that. She didn't get the baby shower and all of that, but she got our excitement and our just gratefulness that she was here in this world. And I think that as a foster family that I, you need to be excited for that little baby. But on the other side of the coin, there's a really heavy, heavy feeling. There's a lot of brokenness surrounding foster care in general, but especially brand new newborns. Like these kids didn't even have a chance. And I say that meaning because of their mother's choices when they're pregnant, you know, it's setting them up for a life of hard stuff, right? Learning delays, disability syndromes, all sorts of things. So for one, there's that. And just knowing that this child did not get the greatest start at life, like that's a really hard thing. Seeing them go through withdrawal and the, seeing them being pain, that's a really hard thing and really broken thing. Knowing that a family is being broken up, that's a really hard thing. Knowing that there's a mom they're not allowed to breastfeed and hold and snuggle her newborn baby. And she might want to or she might not want to, but just knowing that she doesn't get that, that's a really hard thing. So there's a lot of brokenness. <sighs> so I just want you to be prepared 
for not only the strange feeling, but be excited. You're going to feel excited, but you're also going to feel really broken and you're just going to have a really heavy feeling. So just be prepared for all of those emotions. Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. Bringing a foster baby home right from the hospital and being that person for them is it's an honor and it's a privilege and it makes me emotional just thinking about it because it's bringing me back to the days when we had Rosie in the hospital and knowing that there's babies born like this all of the time that need loving foster families and there's not enough foster families and these withdrawing that aren't getting the snuggles and the hugs and the love that they deserve and it's a lot. Anyways guys, I hope you found that video helpful. I know when the first time I went to pick up a baby from the hospital, I wish I knew some of these things. So I hope you find that helpful. If you want to see more videos about foster care adoption, I will link up the foster care playlist. There's tons of content here on this channel about that. But I would love to have you subscribe if you're new and you like this video. There's lots more like it as well as general mom life content and purposeful living, intentional living. I would love to hear some comments down below about bringing home babies from the hospital and your experience and things you may have felt. I just love to connect with other foster moms. I love to hear how it goes in other states and other countries and it just helps to build the sense of community here among all the foster mamas. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video, share, subscribe, all that good stuff and I will see you on the next one. Bye!